are the backup singers for the one and only Mexican Elvis. Number one, what is your name, please? My name is Elvis. Number two. My name is Elvis. Number three. My name is Elvis. Only one of these people is the real Elvis and is the only one sworn to tell the truth. Now let's meet our panel, film and television producer David Niven, Jr. Contributing editor for Red Book Magazine, Dr. Ruth Westheimer. From Santa Barbara, John Callahan. And to tell the truth's very own, Kitty Carlisle. Here's the host of To Tell the Truth, Alex Trebek. Being a big Elvis fan, he was in the uh, the armed services. He served for a while. I forget what what branch was that. Was that Army, Navy? Do you remember? Yes, I do. It was in the Army. He was in the Army. Uh, number one, what was his least? What was your least favorite movie of Elvis's? Blue Hawaii. Blue Hawaii. Yeah. Thank you. John, you're so coy in your questioning. I can't remember. Could you help me out, <laughs> Doctor Ruth? Uh, number two, uh, do you dream about the real Elvis? Often. <laughs> and uh, number three, um, when you make that mouth um, like this gesture, uh, what do you what do you think about kissing? I think of everything. <laughs> like music or women? David. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, number one, why did you decide to become the king? For fun. It's a fun thing to do. All right. Number two, as you seem to do everything that Elvis does, do you also have a? Is there a Mexican Priscilla in your life? Yes, her name is Priscilita. Hmm. How charming. Um, <laughs> hey, you asked the question, David. He gave you an answer. Number three, when you sing, um, what is it called? You ain't nothing but a chihuahua. Uh, do you have to pay any royalties to the Elvis or whoever it is that composed the song? Luckily, I don't. Why not? Oh, we'll have to wait for an answer to that one. We are saved by the bell. Time now for the members of our panel to cast their ballots for the one they feel is the real Elvis. Kitty, for whom did you vote? Well, it's probably number one, who was quite monosyllabic and, and very Spanish in the beginning. Uh, and number three was, was good with Dr. Ruth. But I voted for number two. He looks more like Elvis than the others. Might have given him an idea. So. All right, John. They're very good liars. I really went with number two. He just seemed like he would enjoy the character of Elvis. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Dr. Ruth. I liked his dreams. <laughs> and I like that the women are in there, so I did vote Dr. for Ruth, number two. As I understand it, you like everyone's dreams. <laughs> Particularly if there are people of the opposite sex in those yes. dreams. Thank you. <laughs> David has those kinds of dreams all the time. For whom did you vote? Well, I voted for Priscilita, right? I thought that was a wonderful answer that number two gave. And also, he, have, he has as much hair on his chest as Elvis did. <laughs> all righty. <laughs> Well, once again, ladies and gentlemen, it is easy to review the voting. All of the votes went to challenger number two. So it's time now to find out who the real south of the border Elvis Presley is. Will the real Elvis please stand up? <laughs> I fooled you, I yes. An American fable. Once upon a time, way down south of the border in tiny Tupelo, Chihuahua, in Mexico, a soon-to-be legend was born. Orphaned as a baby, but never abandoned, for women were always nearby, primping, competing for his attention, and at the slightest curl of a lip, they'd come running. It seemed all women wanted to be his friends, his lovers, his backup singers. But who is the mamacita of this orphan? And more importantly, who is his papa Cito? I have been searching for my true parents, and I think I have narrowed it down to two people, and that could be Elvis, naturalmente. Thank you, ma'am. And who else could be my mama, pero Charo. Gucci, Gucci. The child of Elvis and Charo. See, si. Well, you know, they worked together in 
They were, they were both in Las Vegas in 1960, which is the time of my conception. Viva Las Vegas! <laughs> Being in the same city, that's close See, enough. In Las Vegas, enough. anything can, can happen. Can happen in Las Vegas. Whether real or merely a psychic fusion of Elvis and Charo, the fallout from their explosive talents is Elvis, the Mexican Elvis. A I notice that all of you don't call yourself impersonators. Does the word impersonator offend you? No, I like the word. You like the word? <laughs> I'm a, but I'm a, I mean, translator, Elvis translator. You're an Elvis kind of translator. Mexican Elvis, you know, <laughs> translator. <laughs> well, And so you, you sort of do it in Spanish? It's or? a Mexican point of view, you know, someone changed the words to in el ghetto, it's to in el barrio, that's all right, mama, that's all right, mamacita, that's for you. And you know, it's, it's a Mexican point of view. Mamacita, yes, uh -huh. yes. Uh -huh. Well, Elvis really liked the gospel stuff. I mean, Elvis had won three Grammys, and the Grammys that he won were for gospel records. But I wanted to show the bad things about religion, like the religious right, or the ideas of people making um, religion a weapon against gays or single mothers or drug addicts or stuff like that and that the whole idea that God, whatever idea you have it or Jesus isn't a hateful kind of thing and like AIDS isn't the wrath of God and stuff like that. Spanish version of the all-American rock and roll king? Yes, and he's here. Elvez lives. Plus, Claudia Cohen has the latest on Oscar nominees, Tom Cruise. What did you do before this? <clears throat> uh, well, I was running La Luz de Jesus Art Gallery. That's why I still run as an art gallery in Los Angeles. Ah. And, you know, I, it's a combination of living art and selling art. Mm -hmm. I'm the living art. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three. <laughs> Black and white. Black and white, absolutely. What what sort of difference? Robert's a lot more timid, a lot more it keeps into himself, um, doesn't have an accent. Um, <laughs> um, a lot more quiet, more in. Elvez is very outgoing and outlandish and Mr. Showman and Robert is a lot more introverted and shy. He seems almost like a boy when he's Robert and a man when he's Elvis. It's the mustache. Once that mustache goes on, wham, goes from Robert to Elvis. Like he could have his hair up, his outfit on and everything, but he doesn't actually become Elvis till he gets that pencil thin mustache and it on. <laughs> Something magical about it. It transforms him instantly. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, we put together just a little birthday thing. This sort of combines Mexican heritage of Los Angeles with what you like. Elvis. 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 We have a, You know who Elvez is? The Mexican yeah, Elvis? Yeah, yeah. He is here to sing happy birthday oh, to you. Wow. Can we bring out Elvez? Elvez, ladies and gentlemen.
dedicated to one of the American presidential candidates. He's a very bad guy. He is the governor of California. He tried to pass 187 because he's a cabron or something like that. Something crazy about him. This song is dedicated to someone named Pete. Senor P. Wilson, you know what I'm talking about. You ain't nothing but a chihuahua. Yapping all the time. You ain't nothing but a chihuahua. Yapping all the time. Words you ain't never got to gather. But no, it's gonna be good. This morning, we are pleased to have as our special guest on Sunup, the Zeros. San Diego area, you're right? Right. And uh, you are Javier? Javier, yes. And we introduce the rest of your group, could you? This is Robert Elm Lopez. And he has a, a connection to someone here at KFMB, right? Right. Your dad works, uh, yeah. the floor director works here on Sun Up and does it. He, in fact, he designed this beautiful set, I think, in the background, too, which is really super for the Zeros. I'm so grateful to have you Thank here. Thank you for having us yeah. and our guitar player, Paul. Paul, welcome, Paul. Now, very interesting. I have to say real quick, you've had a lot of family members that have worked at yes. our station. Yes, Channel 8 nepotism at its <laughs> finest. My dad worked here. Bob Lopez, my uncle, had a wonderful TV show called Shane and Wonderful, Shane in Wonderland. And my cuñado, Mario Escovedo, you, you, my mom. It's a family business. That's it's how like you got the on the show. That's yes. how you got on the That's show. That's how I got on the show. He's a <laughs> sexy Spanish oh. guy. Oh. Those fabulous leather pants. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I love his mustache. He just makes my knees numb. He makes the world a better place. He, he does. does. Here I go. Alves is always in a good mood. <laughs> um, he stands taller. When I first used to do it, it was really funny because from the moment I got out of the house, I would be Elvez. I'd be exhausted by the time I got home, and now I'm really lazy, and I'll just wait till the last minute, and then I'll become, as I hit the stage. <laughs> I have put out dozens of records. I've toured around the world. I've been on Oprah, The Tonight Show. I was a, a question on Jeopardy. One of my crown achievements was having my gold lame mariachi suit on display at the Smithsonian Institute in Washington, DC. Yes. Whether you like it or not, I'm a part of American history. And now I'm here with you. on a Tuesday night opening for myself. 